Hey guys, it's been exactly 15 days since iOS 12 was released. Today we got iOS 12 beta 2 and inside are a lot of goodies. So I personally found a lot, you guys found a lot. Let's bring them all together and show you in this video over 70 changes to iOS 12 beta 2. And the first one I noticed right away after updating on my personal iPhone is that all of the apps that were crashing now no longer do so. So I was very happy to learn that that bug has been fixed. Next thing you'll notice is that the speed improvements overall, it just feels feels great again, little lags here and there. There are still some, don't get me wrong, I've noticed some, but overall it feels much better. Now this is a bit strange, but some users on the iPhone 7 and 8 are reporting that with iOS 12 beta 2, they now get haptic feedback when unlocking using Touch ID. Although some are saying they don't, so I'm not sure if this is a feature or a bug. All right, so we'll start on the lock screen. The notifications have gotten reworked with the animations. So if we actually 3D touch on them, you'll actually notice this very smooth and kind of fold out animation. And the larger the animation is, the cooler it looks actually. So very nice that Apple has paid attention to that. The actual circle X here on the top, as you can see, is now easier to distinguish. It's brighter versus the old one. And I noticed this, if you actually go and click on the uh, stack notifications, look at the notification center text. It gets replaced with the text of the uh, app it's belonging to. So look at that, it gets replaced by podcasts while over here it stays at notification center. So definitely much cleaner looking. Sorry, I just switched the phones around. On the left now is beta two, the newer one on the right is the older one. Anyways, going to manage notifications, you'll actually see that there is a bolder text on the options here whereas before it was slimmer, and there's an updated description for what this managing does. Also, there's a new animation, of course, when going into quick reply, and after leaving it, it kind of dissolves very nicely there. I also noticed that on the home screen, when you jump into quick reply here, and then you exit it, oh, and by the way, look at that X, it's much larger there as well. And uh, if I exit it, there's a new animation, watch this. So it kind of slides up instead of just bouncing outwards over here. Now from the lock screen, when you're streaming content to an AirPlay device, notice the icon now turns blue. Also inside of the control center, you'll notice the battery icon and percentage now sits lower for whatever reason. I'm not sure if this is a feature or a bug. Now look at the top left there, the privacy icon for location tracking is now rounded, looks a little nicer. Now when you have Bluetooth enabled, it will no longer show in the control center. Previously it did here, and I'm not sure again if this is a bug or a feature on Apple's part. And in the control center, the 3D touch platter for screen recording, you'll notice the text with the disclaimer is now contrasted, so it's a little easier to read. And that feature where you can hold the space button to access the trackpad to move the cursor now works on the iPhone 10 and all other devices that have 3D touch. Apple definitely updated the 3D touch platter here, the icon in the weather app. Notice that it's a little bit different. So it's darker there, it's closer to the cloud. So these little tiny differences, I know it's funny. But uh, anyway, you jump in and you'll notice that the overall shading is darker now on iOS 12 beta 2. And if you look closely at the icons here, they're smaller. So smaller sun icons, uh, the moon icons are smaller now, the sunset, sunrise icons are smaller. So very, very minimal differences, but they certainly are there. Oh, and the GPS now works properly in iOS 12 beta 2. It locks on properly. It actually works with navigation, whereas before it would just spin endlessly and just really be a mess. On oh, the face ID, prompt now when using it within apps is slightly different. It has text below it. Uh, so change that up a little bit. In the app store, you'll notice a new interface when you search. So if I just type in anything here, you'll notice the text is smaller now, you can fit more. Also within the app store, in your account settings, there's a new tab for personalization now. So in here, you get the option to look over all of this, ratings and reviews, pre-orders, subscriptions, purchased apps and games. So a lot more descriptive, definitely. And within the music app, 3D Touch has been reworked. It's got a nice new animation, so a different blur effect. It kind of comes in a little bit differently. I'd say it's nicer, but it still needs work. It's a little janky here. And I noticed this, you can actually 3D touch on the actual now playing bar where previously you couldn't, you can only press on it. And within the spotlight suggestions, apps now have a little arrow as a shortcut. And looking at suggestions here, if you actually 3D touch on a suggestion with the keyboard popped up, it'll automatically be dismissed now in beta two. And there's also a new animation here as well. So it's slightly a little bit different. It pops in, fades in nicely, background blurs out. Also, it's just a little bit different. So within the share settings of photos, lots of new icons here that have been reworked. So the copy icon, as you can see, has been rounded, looks more in line with the rest. Also, we've got a new create watch face icon actually showing an Apple watch, not whatever that is. And uh, there's a new assigned to contact icon, as you can see, 
a little bit smaller, and the print icon has been made friendlier as well. Also, the more icon, as you can see, is larger here. And within photos, the media types, as you can see, the text is now larger, easier to read. And within the Safari share sheet, if I jump in here, you'll see that the add to reading list icon, the glasses have been made a little bit smaller and bolder. And there's also a new icon for create PDF. So as you can see, that one's a little friendlier as well. Oh, and if I actually jump into more here, so the text previously for open in news has been fixed to open in a news. In settings, the search results have once again been optimized. They don't give you this endless amount of info. Now it's more focused. And there's a new interface here in the battery settings. So as you can see, there's a couple new views here. So on the main one, it'll show you the battery level and this more easier to understand view. Also, if we go into the bar graph of view, it's a little darker, just easier to distinguish the bars here, I guess, just a little bit different. And actually here on the bottom, so where it said show activity, it's now called show usage time. Inside the do not disturb mode, the description has been separated from up here and placed beneath the bedtime mode. And in the notifications tab, there's a new area for Siri suggestions where you can quickly disable or enable them for all apps in here. Now in settings, there's a new splash screen for screen time where it'll give you info on what it's about. And alongside that, there are also new splash screens for downtime, app limits, and content and privacy. And also within screen time, set up screen time for family also works. Uh, previously it didn't, you could just click it, but nothing ever came up. And within screen time, you can actually look at other devices you own. So click up here on devices and it'll show you the stats and info for other devices that are hooked up to the same iCloud. Now within cellular settings in here, depending on which carrier you have, you will see your carrier info. I don't have it on Sprint, but on T-Mobile, you will see a new section with a lot more details. And within accessibility, increased contrast is no longer its own tab. It has a little option right here. And before it had reduced transparency inside of it. Now it's its own option as well with a tab view, which is kind of pointless. They should have just made a toggle on that one as well. And with increased contrast enabled on both, jumping into the messages app, you'll notice that your messages, whether they're iMessage or regular, will now appear darker. And Smart Invert is now working even more reliably for whatever reason on certain sites, YouTube, for example, it doesn't actually load the stuff properly. Properly. Now in iOS 12 beta 2, the thumbnails, as you can see, are not reversed and the artwork itself. If you guys use a SIM pin, there's a new screen. The interface has been updated for the iPhone 10. Looks much cleaner now. And this is the new interface when actually being suggested a passcode within Safari. It's much shorter than the standard keyboard. Looks very nice. Now within the messages app, if I jump into the camera and the effects camera and going into the shapes parts, you'll notice that it goes right up and then left instead of all right arrows. And the Animoji interface now is a slightly smaller, more complex compact. Previously, you had more room here, but the actual Animoji face doesn't shrink at all. And jumping into the Memoji editing section, so right here, remove has been replaced by delete. And actually, in the editing portion, if you scroll all the way down, you can't quite scroll as far as you could previously before. In the Voice Memos app, you have a new splash screen as well. Previously, it just greeted you with this. And within the News app, in the Browse section, you'll find a new Spotlight section in here. And when listening to a podcast with chapters, going into the chapter here, it'll have a now playing indicator on the chapter you're listening to, as you can see right there. And within the clock app, the time travel references have been removed and relocated to the stock clock app here. And lastly, some iPad changes. So the iPad, much like the iPhone 10 now, gets a little control center grabber on the lock screen in the top right. Looks kind of decent, I guess. And the iPad now shows AM and PM in the clock on the top left now. And a very welcome change. When using an iPhone app on an iPad that's not supported, of course, for the screen size, it will now show in the iPhone 4.7 inch screen size instead of the previous iPhone 4 inch size. And this is very exciting. iOS 12 beta 2 actually includes references to the Apple Watch upcoming editions for this year. So possibly a series five in here. Uh, maybe the one with the larger display. So there were several new model numbers found in the actual change logs. Oh, and I noticed that the measure app now is more reliable and easier to use. So uh, definitely doesn't lose track of itself or the point as fast as before. And uh, it'll actually snap to the surface, which it does more reliably now in beta two. And don't know why you need to do this, but you can now actually copy the software update notes within the settings app. And also within screen time, you can now filter by show categories or the individual apps and websites. And you can actually go into them and get more specifics on both of the apps 
and the categories. So very nice update here to screen time. Okay, and that's it for the features, guys, but I still wanted to mention a couple of things. So updating from beta one to beta two actually reduced the amount of storage that iOS 12 requires by 0.4 gigabytes. So I got that back. Also wanted to talk about the actual numbers. So I'm gonna run a Geekbench on both here. And there's that score, not any different from the first beta, you know, very, very minimal change here. The actual difference is the animations and 3D touch differences that Apple has implemented. It feels much better and the face ID seems seems to be slightly faster, but that could be a placebo. This bug with the uh, brightness is really gonna drive me crazy in beta two for whatever reason. It's full brightness, but it seems really, really poor. Okay, and there it is, iOS 12 beta two. I was pretty thorough, but as always, there will be more features and I'll include those in the next video if I did miss any, which of course I did. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned for the next one. Peace.